So summer has not entirely ended here in Southern California. We're leaning in to fall, but it does feel high time that we review all of the prolific moments of pop that we have had in 2024. Rank and score all of the albums of summer 2024. Now, not all of these came out after the summer solstice, okay? We are going to include Tortured Poets. We are going to include Cowboy Carter because I feel like they played into the summer culture of 2024 as it were. I wanted to do like a Dance Moms pyramid, but there are nine contestants and there's no way to make a pyramid with nine. And so we are going to be scoring these albums like the Olympics because that's the other thing that happened this summer. Our nine contestants can earn up to five points in each of four categories for a potential total of 20 points. Those categories are quality of work. What is the quality of these songs, of this album? Was the work that was put out musically good? Was it of a prolific and good quality for the artist from whence it came? Vibes. When you think of this album, the overall vibes. How were the vibes? Playlist longevity. How long will the songs from this album stick around in my like driving playlist, in my playing while I'm hanging out with friends playlist? How long will I see these songs and not hit skip? How long will I see these songs and think to add them to different playlists to where I want to hear them again? How long will I be recommending these songs to friends by putting them on playlists that I send them? How long will I be going out of my way to listen to the songs on this album. Do I think it will just be for the next few months since it came out or do I think that it will last for years and months to come? And finally, cultural impact. What did this album do in society on the internet? How did that come off? How did that play out? How did it feel? How did it look? Each of these nine contestants can have up to five points in each of these four categories for a potential grand total of 20 points. And at the end, we will review and we will see our gold medalist, our silver medalist, and our bronze medalist albums for summer 2024, but also the rest of them because we're just gonna talk about how they stack up and we're gonna see all of them at the end. Okay, let's do it! So Cowboy Carter. Quality of work. Three out of five. I liked Cowboy Carter. I did. It was not my favorite Beyonce album. Was it yours? Was it your favorite Beyonce album? Was it your favorite of Beyonce's work? And I understand that Cowboy Carter had a purpose and was a larger statement than just like Beyonce hopping on the country train. It does not contain most of my favorite Beyonce songs. And I'm not like a Beyonce stan or anything, but I like her. When I look at all of the songs and all of the ones that I liked more than other Beyonce songs on other albums, it ends up being a three out of five performance. There are some songs I really, really like, don't get me wrong. I've, I've listened to this album and I do like it. I really like how it starts. I like American Requiem goes into Blackbird and I like how it loops if you let Amen end and then it starts over at American Requiem. It just sounds so incredibly beautiful. Big fan, not my favorite Beyonce record to listen to front to back. And again, I'm not a Beyonce stan, so if you have something to say about that, let me know. Vibes, four out of five. Four out of five. I feel like there was a very clear intention and a very clear statement made with this album. And I feel like generally, sonically, it fit that when you listen to it from front to back, you kind of feel the vibe that it's trying to give out. I like the cover mostly. Um, I liked the release of it, the Cowboy Carter moment. I wish it had been a little bit closer um, to actual summer, but not everyone could release their album in like June or July. I get it. It wouldn't be strategically smart. I do think Cowboy Carter hit vibes wise. I think it could have hit harder, especially for a Beyonce album and how big the tour was last year. But also like she just came off of a massive tour and she's dropping another massive album. So there is something to be said for that. Playlist 
longevity. I'm going to be so for real with you. The playlist longevity for this for me is going to be a two. The only songs that I see myself realistically re-listening to unless I just feel like in a country mood and putting Cowboy Carter on in the background because I'm not really country music girly and so like this is the closest that I feel like I would get to like listening to a country record from front to back is listening to Cowboy Carter um on a loop while I'm like cleaning or something or driving maybe like on a long drive. Really the only ones that I'm going to pull up again are, and I know this isn't everyone's favorite song, Texas Hold'em and Yeah Yeah and Two Most Wanted. That's it. And I pull up more songs than that from past Beyonce albums. Let me know what ones you will be pulling back up. And finally, cultural impact. Four out of five. The statement, Beyonce always has something to say with her albums, man. And this was absolutely no different. The rollout of it, the theming, the subject matter, the entire just movement of Cowboy Carter, by Beyonce absolutely had a cultural impact. Do I think it could have been bigger? Yes. I feel like the Cowboy Carter hype really kind of petered out pretty much entirely by June. So that puts Cowboy Carter with a three, a four, a two, and a four solidly at 13. I want to talk about Eternal Sunshine. Remember that? The Ariana album um, where she asked why we care about whose dick she ride. What? Quality of work. For me, it was a three. I am not a huge Ariana stan. I do like a handful of her songs though. I was much more of an early Ariana fan. I liked My Everything and Dangerous Woman. I liked the single Thank You Next. I was iffy on the album. Did not like Positions and I like this only slightly more than Positions and there are just some songs that I think are like definitely not her best work and feel a little bit phoned in but have some like nice elements to them for me that I feel like lift them up just a little bit and I will add just like a little bit of credit for my bias of not being like a huge Ariana music style fan um, of her and how she is right now in the first place so for her quality of work I think it is fair to put it at a three. Vibes this was a two for me the vibes were kind of just like she speaks on the Spongebob affair question mark Saturn returns were kind of the vibes. I really did enjoy when you looked a little bit further into it, some of the really true breakup feelings that are present in this album. And so I wanted to give it credit for that as well, especially how much I like We Can't Be Friends and how I don't feel like it necessarily focuses on the end of a marriage, but does definitely bring some real good breakup album vibes in. Kind of, um, dare I say in the same way Melodrama did, not um, that I think this album is anywhere nearly as good as Melodrama, but I feel like Melodrama was a breakup album without being like so clearly outwardly a weepy breakup album, but like if you really listened, it kind of was. And if you really listen, I think this kind of is a little bit too. There are happy moments, but then there's like a real clear like dissipating and parting and breaking down and leaving of a relationship in it as well. Um, but you really have to like listen for that. And to be honest, if I listen to this all the way through, I grow bored. Um, and I didn't find the album cover to be anything super special. The vibes for this just kind of like diluted um, and floated away pretty quickly for me. Playlist longevity. Again, I'm going to give this a three, not because I think it's a three. I think for me personally, it's a two because I'm literally only ever going to listen to We Can't Be Friends and Yes And pretty much ever at all, but I will give credit that other people might listen to a couple other songs and so I'm willing to bump it up to a three. For me personally, it's a two, willing to give it the benefit of the doubt of it being a three for most people. So we're adding for my bias basically. Cultural impact, the only reason that this isn't a two and it's a three is because of the Spongebob affair tea. People were interested in her speaking 
on the divorce and the SpongeBob affair. And she did kind of via this album within Yes And and kind of in some other songs a little bit as well. Um, and so that's really the only thing that kind of got people looking for this album. People looked, people moved but I feel like they didn't look for all that long. They looked to just kind of like soak in what there was to see and then they kind of returned to their lives. I don't feel like they stayed here and they stayed on this for long. Um, I feel like I kind of got into Yes And a little late. It didn't really hit with me the first week, but I did really enjoy We Can't Be Friends right away. I was a We Can't Be Friends stan and then Yes And just kind of started to hit with me. I just started to like, I don't know, when Ariana's funny, I think she's really funny. Um, sometimes I feel like she tries to be funny and it doesn't come off as funny, but sometimes it does hit and I think she is quite funny and rightfully snippy in Yes And, and I really enjoy that. Um, I feel like once I started hearing the lyrics to that, I started having more fun with it. And I feel like by the time I was into Yes And, everyone else was over it. Um, so I feel like that says something about the lack of lasting impact. Like if I was just getting into it and everyone else was already over it and it only took me like two weeks to like get into it as a song, like I feel like it didn't really last that long now, did it? So with three threes and a two, that puts Eternal Sunshine sitting right at an 11 out of 20. Arianators, please do not murder me. Um, It is just my fault. Now Short and Sweet may have just come out a few weeks ago, but I would absolutely argue that one could say it was the summer of Sabrina Carpenter. And not only that, the summer of espresso, baby. Quality of work. If you want to know what I thought more in depth about Short and Sweet, I literally just posted a whole video about that last week. Go check it out. And then I posted a really <laughs> concerning, messy, unhinged first listen and reaction to it. But for quality of work, I'm going to have to give Sabrina Carpenter a four out of five. And the only reason I'm not giving her a five out of five is because I feel like she has more to give. I feel like she can do more. This is such a like solidification of her skills and the direction that she wants to go with her music and I am so excited to see more of it and I think she can do more of it. Will be it be the exact same thing? I don't know. It doesn't have to be. We're still in this Sabrina era and I really do enjoy the quality of the work. While it's not her first album, it's her first album that I've really, really, truly enjoyed and clung on to. So I think it's her best work thus far, but I don't think it's the best work that she can absolutely do. I think she has more in the tank and I am excited to see it, but I am not expecting that anytime soon. I am super happy to live in the short and sweet era with this work that we have right now. For vibes, we're gonna have to give it another solid four. I feel like the Sabrina Carpenter aesthetic has been kind of the short and sweet era. I feel like we've seen that with the music video for Please Please Please, the music video for Espresso, and then I feel like we've added to it now with the music video for Taste. I feel like she really has a very clear style aesthetic. I feel like her stylists from her hair and her makeup to her wardrobe stylists have really been on point. She's had a really clear, consistent vibe going on vulgar sweet go-go girl thing going on and I can't get enough of it the sort of like slightly Tarantino-y edge to the taste music video also really kind of fits into that nicely because you have the contrast of the super sweet and the shocking and she really plays that contrast really well and has fun with the type of humor and the type of writing that really resonates with this generation and she's really been hitting the mark vibes wise. Playlist longevity, another four, just fours across the board so far for short and sweet. I absolutely see myself. I am going to continue to listen to Espresso. I am going to continue to listen to Please Please Please. I am going to continue to listen to Taste. I am going to continue to listen to Lie to Girls. I am going to continue to listen to Coincidence. I am going to continue to listen to Sharpest Tool. I am going to continue to listen to Slim Pickens. 
that's like half the album. I'm definitely gonna continue to listen to those ones and those are just the ones that I'm thinking about. I am gonna continue to listen to Good Graces. I'm certainly going to continue to listen to a lot of these and I feel like these are songs that are rife for summer playlists. They are catchy, fun, funny pop songs that I don't think are going to stop being catchy and fun and funny for sunny days to come. And I think like to put you in a good mood and make you feel sunny on not so sunny days as well. Cultural impact, I would have to put this at a four as well because not only the release of the album, I feel like people listened to this album because they liked espresso they liked please 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 they liked the taste music video and so they went and they listened to the album and not only that but i feel like like i said it has been kind of the summer of the rise of sabrina in some ways she's really been killing it on the eras tour people have been tuning in for her nonsense outros and she's had people watching and she's been doing a great job of being worth watching once she's had their attention in terms of her performances, her aesthetics, and now the work she has put out. And so I feel like she has really occupied a space in the zeitgeist this summer when there are a lot of people vying for that spotlight and she has managed to keep a little bit of it and go her for that. I think she's really put in her dues and she's earned it. Um, and I was really quite a hater, quite a hater. I feel like I sound like such a like converted Carpenter right now, but really truly I was not until Short and Sweet. Go watch my Sabrina Carpenter Short and Sweet videos, both of them, and you will see. I was not anti Sabrina Carpenter, but just kind of like, I like two of her songs, the rest are fine. I definitely liked her more than an unknown J.J. Abrams descendant who made an appearance on the Eras tour stage, but I wasn't like jumping up and down for this album. I was expecting to probably like maybe three songs on it and that sure as heck didn't happen. <laughs> she really, really impressed and impressed and impressed again for me on this album and I would love to know if she did the same for you. That brings Short and Sweet to a grand total of 16 out of 20 because short, sweet, and mighty she is. No, that's stupid. Continue on with an album that did not actually technically come out this summer, but it was an album of this summer nonetheless inarguably, and that is, of course, The Rise and Fall of the Midwest Princess by One Chapel Grown. I absolutely love this album, and one of the reasons I wanted to do this video in the first place was really partially because of s there were so many albums and like people who really had their moment this summer to where I feel like when you look back in two, three years, you could see this as being the summer of so many of these different albums. I know that so many people are going to think of it as the summer of Chapel Roan, and I'm so excited to see like how she continues to move through the world and grow as an artist but I would have to give the quality of work on the rise and fall of a midwest princess a five out of five because I you can look back I did like a whole ranking of every song on the album and like I talk about my thoughts on each and every track because I really truly only have one skip on that album and I don't even think it's a bad song every single other one just feels like it has it does its own thing but fits into the whole so beautifully it feels each and every moment of each song feels so tailored and so intentional there are so many moments where you can tell exactly what she was trying to do and she hits it so perfectly it is just such a timeless album to me i think that i will be listening to the entirety of it for years and years and years to come i have really like gone through phases of listening to it and then like come back around on it just since i started listening listening to it in like December, January of last year. I love these songs. I think they take the best parts of so many amazing parts of music and really sew them together in a way that is now a signature of Chapel. The vibes are once again a five. Are you kidding me? Have you seen the looks that she and her band have been turning each and every time they pull up on stage? The aesthetic is just so clear and beautiful and 80s and glam rock and drag and the glitter going to the club with your friends picking a fight having fun talking about it the next morning messy relationships hooking up falling in love discovering yourself there's just so many beautiful layers that really link in together and create this amazing aesthetic that chapel just continues to grow and embody so 
wonderfully. Her hair, her makeup, there's just so much vibe. There's just so many vibes to this album. This album is emanating vibes so strongly and I could not be more grateful for the vibes that this is emanating. You know those um like Lisa Frank drawings? People have been saying that that's what listening to Good Luck Babe sounds like. I absolutely agree. I feel like this is just a beautiful, dragified, updated, glitter, sexy version of Lisa Frank and I could not ask for more. It is just a, such a wonderful vibe and if it hasn't caught on for you, go back and listen to it and I think it will. Even if you're not in the mood for it, it, it reaches in and it grabs you, it pulls you up and it says, come dance with me, come play with me and you kind of can't help it. Playlist longevity, I already said it. I'm going to be listening to this album for years to come. The songs are just so good. They are so direct in what they are trying to be. They are so fully produced and thought out and just wonderful, delicious treats, each and every one of them. And I have been coming back to them and I can't wait to keep coming back to them more. Let me know what your guys' favorites on this album in particular are. I feel like that's a very, not a controversial topic, but everyone kind of seems to have a different opinion. Playlist longevity, another five. And finally, the cultural impact of the rise and fall of the Midwest princess at a four, um, which the only reason I put it, I don't put it at five is that it is so late after it, this album had like a slow burn rise to it. And so I feel like it didn't have necessarily the full cultural impact that I really truly believe in my heart, these songs and this work and just this album as a whole, um, marketing, aesthetic vibes and all really could have had. And so for that reason, I do bring it down to a four. And because I do think that there are some people who are just learning about or have not learned about Chapel Roan quite yet. Um, so for that reason, I do have to put the cultural impact at a four, not a five, but that puts the rise and fall of the Midwest princess sitting at a 19 out of 20, which is going to be pretty hard to be. Let's talk about Billie Eilish. Hit me hard and soft. I did, even as a Swifty, listen to Hit Me Hard and Soft. I am a medium Billie fan. I've enjoyed ev all of her albums, to be honest. I've enjoyed like a good handful, a little scoop of songs from every album. And the ones that I've liked, I have really liked. Um, I enjoy what Billie and Phineas do. It is not like my top genre of music, but I have, like I said, liked a little scoop of songs from each album. And the ones I've liked, I've liked a lot. And so the quality of work for this, having listened to each and every Billie album, I would put out of four. I think it is good. I think it is still very much in her lane, still very much doing what she and Vinny's do still good, still interesting. And I felt again, like each song did a little bit something different, had a little bit something different to say, but we're very much all interconnected. And I think it definitely worked as a piece. For vibes though, I would have to give it a two because I really, to me, the vibes were um, dark blue and like drowning in the blue of a breakup and like light lesbianism. Um, those were the, the vibes that I was able to get from Hit Me Hard and Soft. Um, and like, I get that it kind of like links up with the name and stuff, but like the vibes weren't, when you have things, I think the thing is, is that when you have things with such very strong tastes and vibes like Chapel's album, like Short and Sweet, like Brat, it's really hard for something like this to like push through in comparison vibe wise. But then I also, I think about the vibes for her other albums and they haven't been smack you over the head strong. Although I guess, I guess her second one felt a little bit, well, no, not even that. I, I guess she, she's not a smack you over the head person. It's hard. I just, I feel like this album could have distinguished itself vibe-wise a little more. The music was there, the aesthetic was there. I feel like really what took over the talk and the press and the vibes around this album was the whole vinyl thing that I have absolutely no desire to talk about. I don't know, two felt right for the vibes with this one. Even though I do enjoy listening to it and I feel like it does have an aesthetic, it is just kind of maybe like a quarter of an inch over. Uh, maybe, no, not a quarter of an inch. It's one full inch over from what 
she's doing on her last album. Playlist Longevity 3. I will be listening to a handful of these songs. I will be listening to Lunch. I will be listening to L'Amour de la Vie. I will be listening to Birds of a Feather. I will be listening to The Diner. I like the idea of Skinny. I will not be listening to it because it makes me a little bit sad and existential. That's how I feel about um, a lot of songs on her last album too. I'm like, yeah, no, I like this. I enjoy this sung poetry. However, don't need to think about that every day. Um, that's kind of how I feel about Skinny. I don't feel like I like Birds of a Feather as much as everyone else does. I like it, but not like, I'm not going to listen to it constantly. It's just a nice calming song. It's a decent chunk, but it definitely is only enough to earn it a three on Playlist Longevity. Finally, Cultural Impact, I have to put this one uh, a three as well because I feel like it had its moment but then I really feel like the energy got sucked out of it by that whole vinyl thing and that was really all I heard about it and I know um, she had a couple performances I really enjoyed them I did go out of my way to watch them um, but I just don't feel like they were as talked about as they could have been but I know that when it first came out people were aware the Billie Eilish album was coming out it was being talked about the songs were being discussed Lunch and Birds of a Feather absolutely did have moments of their own um, and I think that people outside the Billy fandom liked them and still do like them and so for that reason I do have to concede that it is a three and not a two. Um, I just do think that it could have had, I don't know, like a bigger landing. I feel like all of the other Billy albums have despite her not being the most, you know, intentionally boat rocking celebrity. She just kind of does her thing and people flock to it just by virtue of the fact that it is her and Phineas's thing and different and unique and um very much them and I love that but yeah I don't know this one hit a little bit softer than harder I guess even though I did enjoy the songs I enjoyed on it a lot so that gives Hit Me Hard and Soft a 12 out of 20. Radical optimism I'm gonna be so honest with you guys I tried to listen to this album three times and I kept getting bored but I did eventually listen to all the songs and the only one that I will return to is Houdini. Um, I It's not that I think they're bad because there's other other work that we're gonna talk about that I do think is objectively kind of bad um, and I wouldn't say I think these songs are bad. Training season was good. Um, I, I got into French Exit a little bit. Um, Houdini I do like um end of an era i kind of got into a little bit um but i don't know if it's just like not entirely because i've liked the dua lipa songs that i've heard before i but it's not my favorite i think that she did do better personally on future nostalgia so for that reason i'm going to be giving the quality of work on radical optimism a two i think I almost want to give it a three, but if I'm really only going to come back and listen to one song, yeah, you know what? I'll give it a three though. I feel like I really liked the cover. I really liked the like summer vacation um, clubs in Ibiza, if you will, vibes, um, swimming in the Caribbean, out on the beach, drink, sipping onto the balcony, getting ready for the night, going out and dancing until the sun comes back up. You know, those type of vibes, I really enjoyed it. Um, and then the kind of like sinister, like all oh, the shark fins coming for her, like, ooh, emotional insecurity, you know, whatever. She kind of talked about it, like it was a little bit deeper in that way, um, but, it really felt like that's as far as it went. And then she was hoping that they would play these songs in that situation. Instead, people ended up playing Brat though. And so I would have to give it a two for the vibes. It didn't really seem to follow through on those vibes. And I can't say I feel like the songs really matched the vibes all that much in like a big way. Playlist Longevity, I also, I am going to have to give it a one um, because I'm only really gonna listen to Houdini and that's only if it comes up when like, you know, even if there are other people in the car, I feel like there are other, there are other Dua Lipa songs I would pull up. Yeah, I just, I have to give it a one. Like I'm not really going to listen to pretty much anything from Radical Optimism and like, I would really just have to not care to keep Houdini on. Um, because it's just kind of a mad song to me. And then finally, Cultural Impacts, I am going to give it a two because I feel like there was like a moment where people glanced and then we kind of looked away. Um, and that's, I feel like that's essentially the cultural impact that 
radical optimism ended up having, which is why I feel like every time I say it, I almost say radical optimism. Maybe that's just the echo chamber I'm in, though, um, which tells me that which tells me that big doula peep stands didn't actually love this either. Let me know if you did, because that puts radical optimism at an eight out of 20, um, which if you were keeping track, puts it right at the bottom of the ones we've done so far. But worry not. Worry not. Trust me. Um, we still we still have. We still have some surprises to go. We have a few, we have a few more, um, and they are interesting contenders. Of course, we have to talk about Brat. Of course, we're going to talk about Brat. I think that the quality of work on Brat was a five, actually. I'm not huge on Charlie XCX. I've just kind of been like a casual singles listener for the most part, but I really enjoyed listening to Brat all the way through. Um, there weren't really any songs that I like listened to that I was like, mm, this seems like filler. Mm, I don't understand why this is here. Um, not each and every one of them are gonna be in my playlist forever. We'll get to that with Playlist Longevity, but I feel like it fits together as a cohesive album. I think the message and the purpose and the aesthetic is very clear, not only with like the campaign, but the music itself. I feel like it all fits together really well. And I feel like each song definitely has its place, whether that's more deep or more shallow, they all feel like they actually do something and I get what they're trying to do. And for the most part, I enjoy it. Vibes, I, I've i got to put the vibes for Brat at a five. I feel like if you understood what Brat Summer was, you understood because it was so incredibly clear. Like it was vague, but it was clear. Like you, you knew it was going out. It was hoes don't get cold. It was smoking cigarettes, but only when you're drinking. It's jumping around on a sticky club floor and your jeans and you're going out top and mixing sweat and probably other things with all of the people dancing around you. It's the mascara on your lower lash line the next morning while you're standing outside your building holding a cigarette with a tank top on and no bra. We know what Brat is trying to revive. This is kind of the dirtier side of the recession pop coin. It's just a little bit less glittery. It's a little more bringing up the seedy underbelly of the going out idea. Um, when Chapel was a little bit more smoky and glittery about it, this one is a little bit more turning on the club lights a little bit and enjoying the fact that it is gross and dirty because that means a good time was had. Playlist longevity though, I am going to have to give it, I think, a three because I definitely will be a listening to some of these. I will be bumping 360, 365, Club Classics, Von Dutt, Girl So Confusing, um, and Apple. I think those are the ones that I will be listening to the most. Maybe Sympathy is a Knife. Oh, also Mean Girls. I guess that's about half, so I guess we're gonna have to give the playlist longevity a four. We'll bump it up to a four. So Cultural Impact of Brat was a tough one because I wanted to give it a five because I feel like everyone was kind of like aware of Brat. Um, or at least they had like heard generally like that we were having a brat summer, but I feel like not everyone knew what that meant. There were a lot of people who just had not a clue, not a single clue. And so for that reason, I did bump the cultural impact down to a four, but that still leaves Brat at an 18, which is a very impressive showing, but of course. CXOXO. I see, I guess, what she was trying to do here. Um, it was not, I feel like Pitbull did a better job of like solidifying himself as a rep for Miami. <laughs> Quality of work was a two, bro. Some of these songs, I just don't, it feels like some of these songs just had so much filler in them and so much like vocorder, electro. It feels like I'm not sure what she's trying to do, but it's not sing. Um, remember the songs that people have really liked from her? She sings in them. Um, and they're not acoustic, but they're definitely not this. And I'm not saying she's not singing in these. It's just very, um, very manufactured and very almost bad Daft Punk. I don't know. Um, it's just not my favorite. And so quality of work, I did have to give it a two. Vibes, I again have to give it a two because I just feel like it was trying and not succeeding to reach what it wanted to do. And I feel like a couple of tracks really did hit that. Um, and I did enjoy those tracks, but other than that, I don't feel like anything else really contributed to the vibes other than like the cover. And I feel like if the collection of songs had been good, 
than like it might have locked in with the cover and all been like the vibe she was trying to achieve. I just don't um, see it. Dream Girls and Dade County Dreaming are the only songs that I could possibly in any world see myself be playing from this album. And that is, again, only if they come up when I'm in the right mood on the right type of night, um, feeling that type of vibe. I get with those songs and maybe even like a little bit the Drake song. I don't know. When did Drake listen to one of Camila's albums and was so touched? I, enough people have asked this question. We don't need to go into it, but like, yeah, there's 14 songs on this album and I really only got what she was trying to do with those two. And I can give I Love It a pass as well, but that's three out of 14. Um, And so that leaves the playlist longevity at literally a one because I don't even know if I won't skip those when I come up. Um, And then Cultural Impact, a two, and that's literally only because of the Shawn Mendes of it all with June Gloom and like Coachella and now like Sabrina's album. So she was really like kicked that um, kind of like by other people and like I'll give her the two and not the one because I did know it came out. But like, I am someone who's like checking for pop music, not necessarily checking for Camila, but like, I'm someone who's paying attention. Um, so I'm not even sure if the fact that I knew about it even says anything. So that puts um, Miss Camila with CXOXO securely at the base. Um, okay, let's talk about Scorched Poets. Um, quality of work for Miss Taylor. As a Swifty, I would have to say that this was not the 100% best work we've seen from her yet, but I do think it was really great in a lot of ways. And I do think that there were some career highlight lines here. I think I'll have to sit with it to see if there are career highlight songs, but I really do think there were at least two. And so for that reason, I'm gonna have to give the quality of work a five. I think that there are some really, really good songs on this album and not to mention just that the sheer amount of work at the quality that it is you know the quality threshold really doesn't drop too terribly low within these except for in my opinion one song and like that is not other people's worst song you know she really does keep up the quality of her work even though not every single song is my absolute favorite she does really keep serving it pretty much all the way through the end with the exception of like i said only one track and so i feel like for that i do have to give her a five for quality of work i am biased as a swifty but i do have to give it to her it is quite spectacular the amount of fantastic songs that she was able to put out vibes however i am gonna have to give it a Four. I feel like this vibe wise had about the same strength as Midnight's. It's there and I feel like the kind of sad writerly um, dark wood album was very much necessary from her. I wish it was a little bit more quill pen curly flowy. Um, I feel like there's a little bit too much ballpoint pen in here for my taste um, for the aesthetic of this album. It is there. I just wish that we expanded a little bit further with it. I think that there have been stronger era vibes, but like I said, I do think vibe-wise it is equivalent with, if not a little bit stronger vibe-wise than Midnight's. So we are going to leave it at a four with that one. Playlist longevity, I'm also going to give it a four. There's a lot of songs here and I will listen to a lot of them again and a lot of them I will probably just let play when I have my Taylor Swift-like songs on shuffle and some of them I will skip. Not very many though and so I feel like it's enough. You know, I've really sat with this album for a decent amount of time. I feel like most Swifties are kind of getting familiar with how this album is going to pan out and sit in their lives now that it's been around for a minute. We haven't had it for a full year. I feel like that's when you really, really know. Um, but I feel comfortable right now saying that it's playlist longevity for me among Taylor songs is going to be at a four because there are songs like The Bolter and Who's Afraid of Little Old Me and Fortnite and The Black Dog that I am definitely, definitely, definitely going to listen to again. And then more that I can definitely see myself reaching out for when I'm in a specific mood or just letting play. Now, cultural impact. This one, I have to give a four as well because I feel like it did and then it kind of didn't. Um, but when it did, it really did. You know, I feel like the buildup 
was really strong. And then I feel like the release with the double album was really strong. And then I feel like it really just kind of faded into the Eras tour and became part of that. Um, instead of being its own tortured poets phenomenon all summer long, I feel like people were clowning for rep TV so hard and that Taylor had to wear like a tortured poets reference dress to the VMA and everyone was like, oh, okay, we're still on tortured poets era. We're still on tortured poets era. Like I feel like it hasn't had a huge enough craze and identity of its own to really have people be like, oh yeah, the tortured poets department. Like I'll bet you so many non-Swifties don't actually know the full title of that album. They're like the Poets Society. If you are keeping track, that puts the Tortured Poets Department at a 17. So that puts the final ranking at Camila Cabello C XOXO with seven points. Dua Lipa Radical Optimism with eight points. Ariana Grande Eternal Sunshine with 11 points. Billie Eilish, Hit Me Hard and Soft, with 12 points. Beyonce, Cowboy Carter, with 13 points. Sabrina Carpenter, Short and Sweet, with 16 points. In third place with the bronze medal for album of this summer, Taylor Swift, with silver and second place, Charlie XCX, Brat, with 18 points. And finally, Chapel Roan, The Rise and Fall of a Midwest Princess, with 19 points. Thank you so, so very much for watching this video and for making it to the very end. If you agreed with, disagreed with any of my scores, any of my rankings, please let me know in the comments down below. Let me know what your ranking and maybe like your scores would be for these albums. I think I am going to have like an emoji for each of these. So show me your ranking of these with like emojis, like the order that you would rank these albums in. Once again, thank you so, so very much for being here. I will be back next week with another video. We are hopping back on every week, uploading. We are here, we are doing it, we are excited, and I have so many more videos that I would like to film for you guys. I just need to find the time to do them, but I'm so, so happy to be here and filming because this is one of my favorite things to do. So thank you guys so, so much for being here. Every like, every view, every comment means the absolute world to me because I am a YouTube girly at heart. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And I will see you very soon in the next one.